Good morning, you guys. I want to give you guys an update on seedlings and how that is all going right now. So the lights are on, so it is really bright in here. Um, but everything's looking really good, except a few things are kind of dying. And we've been dealing with um, gnats really bad this year, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I've caught a bunch of them. A lot of the sticky tags are really full. And then I do have to keep trays up here because of the dog. She likes to sleep on the bed and I don't love that. So this is the seed starting room. Lots of stuff in here. I have run out of room completely. I have this section left and that's going to be where I'm going to start some zinnias and some... I'm probably going to start one tray of Cosmos inside. But I've run out of room. So I got to figure out what I'm doing. I'll probably go in, in here since I didn't get any Celosia and I will just put in some Cosmo seeds into this just to get some Cosmos in here. I don't need to have empty rows. Um, so that'll be taken care of there, a few there, and I will refill this tray also. And then what I'm doing is I got these two and a half inch pots from Bootstrap Farmer, and this is what I'm using to pot up with larger things like my dahlias, but then I'm also using them as a riser to get seedlings closer to the lights. You can see they're they're pretty close. Um, ideally, next year I'll take my lights and I will put these on chains so I can lower the lights instead of having to put everything on risers because I do need some of these containers, but I do need to see things closer to the light. But look, everything is looking really good. So let me go over kind of what we have. I do have a couple trays that are not doing too great. Okay, so I opened up the windows to get a little bit better lighting. Um, so these tags here, right here, these are what I'm using to catch the gnats. You can see one just flying around right now. They've worked really well. Some of them are really full. I haven't changed them since I've put any of them in. Some of them haven't really caught many. This one is super full up here, and they're flying around like crazy right now because I'm disturbing them. So hopefully I can continue to catch them. But let's start here on this tray. This is all zinnias. I have two different varieties in here. This is the, what do I have? Giant white. And then I also have the, oh, this is money plant. This is not zinnias. So these guys are the zinnias here. And then these ones here are money plant. Um, the leaves are round. I should have, I should have known that I planted them. But so money plant, the zinnias are doing really well. And I do need to come in and thin some of them. Pretty much every single seed germinated. And then over here, this is the Dahlia patch. And I need to come do some thinning out here. Also take out some of these. But you can see a lot of them are starting to get their, they have their first leaves. And then they have their true leaves coming in. So this is super exciting. And with Dahlias, all of these that I'm growing are basically a brand new variety unknown to anybody. Every time you grow a dahlia from seed, it is a brand new unknown variety. So I have some doubles and some singles. These are all the giant mix. And then this row all the way down is the single mix. This next bit over here is poppies. I have four different kinds of poppies. This one is Thai silk. And you can see that they look kind of different. This one right here is Swan Dawson or something like that. And then this one here, I did let it dry out a little bit, so there's some dead leaves. But it's fine because you can see that even though it had dead leaves, it's it's still shooting up new leaves. This is the amazing gray, and I'm really excited for these ones here. This tray is my biggest failure. This was Celosia Flamingo, and I didn't get a single one in this entire plant. And then here is my Bells of Ireland. And like two weeks ago, I had three plants. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven. We'll see how this goes this year. I started these wrong. You're supposed to soak these in water for 24 hours or 12 hours or something like that. And then you plant them in. But they're fine. They're, I've got a few. I'll take a few. And then these are my dahlias. This is breakout. And I'm trying to start waking it up. And here's another one. And it has started to wake up. So you can see it's got three little buds on it. And once those start to get a couple inches tall, then I will go ahead and transplant them. And then look, this is my African Violet. She's three years old and I love her. Um, up here 
This is just a mix of things. This is some eucalyptus. What is this? This is some yarrow, some feverfew, and then I have a couple snapdragons that I need to come in and start pinching these now that they're tall enough, which to pinch them, it's really easy. You're just going to go through and how this has one, two, three set of leaves, and then you just go and you cut off the head. And these are really cool. I could just stick this in some soil, which I'm going to actually just do. I can stick it in some soil and it will, I'm going to poke a little hole. And then I'm just going to set that in there. And that'll actually totally take off and be a whole nother snapdragon. So I'm gonna let that just sit in there. And when I'm done with the video, then I will transplant it up into something else. Sorry for the weird lighting. I have those lights on and the blinds open because if I don't have them both open, there's not enough light. Um, this tray here is Dusty Miller. I have New Look and Silver Dust, and I only have a row of each. This was my Sweet Peas, and I've already transplanted all of these guys out, and they are not happy with me. And then this is where seedlings apparently come to die. No, they don't. Um, this whole bed here is Eurygium. And they were doing really well, but these ones were in the back and I couldn't see. I wasn't putting enough water in the tray up here. And so these guys didn't get any water, but some of them still have a little bit of green left on them. So we'll see if they come back. If not, it's not that big of a deal. I have plenty of the Eurygium here. Oh no, wait, this is Scabiosa, not Eurygium. I have plenty enough Scabiosa in this bed anyways. Um, and only what, one, two, three, maybe four, maybe five are dead, six. Oh, this whole row, I only got two. This was the star flower and nothing happened. And so I won't be, I probably won't be growing the star flower again. I got one that recently just popped up like two weeks ago and that's all it's done is that in two weeks. So I'm not, I'm not gonna grow that one again. So we did all those down here. This tray is looking really good, and I'm super ready to put these guys out. I didn't get... Okay, Rabbi, calm down. So, this is king size aster. Both of my asters right here in this in these two rows, I got, like, nothing from. Um, they were, like, seeds that were a year and a half old, but they're from a company that I will never order seeds from again, or Dahlia tubers from. I ordered from them and I absolutely hated it. I'm usually not one to like drop names, but I feel like if you're sending out crummy product, then you're cool with being called out. So I got a bunch of seeds from um, Eden Brothers. Do your due diligence on where you order seeds from. I order specifically from Johnny Seed and from Baker Creek. Those are my like two go-to companies. And then I'll just buy a few random packs that I pick up locally at like Home Depot, Walmart, those places. And I know that those might not have the best germination rate, but I'll throw a few extra seeds. Like, but this aster tray right here, I mean, you can see everything else did fine. So obviously it wasn't a meat problem, it was the seeds. But this row of asters, I have sown twice and each time I did like 10 seeds in each and every single one of them. Just do your due diligence on where you order stuff from. Um, but everything else in this bed is looking really good. So in this tray, I have a me, a my, whatever it is, white dill. And so excited to try these guys. They looked really pretty. And then this is aster, what is it? Salmon. These asters look good. These ones look terrible. This one, very low germination rate. And this was the pe peony duchess and the king apricot. Nothing came up. This one did really good. I killed it. This is the um, Tower Tower Chamois, Tower Chamois Aster. And that one also did really good. And then this I have not thinned out, which I really need to thin out. I also probably need to water it a little bit, starting to curl. Um, but this is Artemisia Sweet Annie. And it's supposed to smell really good when it flowers. So I'm excited to grow this one. And I have a whole bunch of seeds that I'm also gonna direct sow of this. And then over in this tray, this is my Gomfrina. And she is slow and having some problems. But whatever, I got more than I actually need. So I have, what do I have? Five varieties in here. I have Snow, Snow White, I have Audrey White, Pink, Atomic Mandarin, 
and we have mandarin and atomic atomic purple um so quite a few different varieties in here and this one is starting to come up this row um this row is starting to come up but they're going slow and same with this row but everything else is up and going and these guys are starting to come up so it won't be long before we have plenty in here i'm super excited for this bed this is my basil is these three i have dark opal i have cinnamon and i think it's called like cardinal so three different types of basil and this one is doing really well right now uh this row which is the lemon basil i think or something like that cinnamon basil yeah cinnamon basil so this row is some status and this row is Campanula. So I have a row of the Forever Silver status, so a very a white status, and some Campanula pour germination right on that because I didn't put them in the freezer. And then this is the, um, what is this? This is Euphorbia Mountain Snow. And they're a little bit leggy, which is kind of weird because I, I grew them properly. Like the light was right on them, but I'm just gonna let them do their thing. And then here, I have some Dara and some Lacy White uh, Discus. So really good germination rate for both of these all over. These ones did really fabulous. On the very last row, this is my Lysianthus. And you guys saw Janie come up for these guys. They're doing good. Um, I did lose one out of this entire tray. Don't exactly know what happened there, but she's gone. But everything else, is doing really well and then here this one i'm kind of annoyed with i have sewn this side twice this side i've sewn it twice um this i've sewn once and then these ones were some seed that i saved and obviously nothing happened with the seeds that i saved but the other ones are really good so this is frosted explosions grass and it's really cool pretty grass and then this is a cress um and they're really leggy and I pulled them all out like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I pulled all of them out and I re-sewed them and I had them literally right next to the light and they still got leggy. So somebody said that I could just bury these stems and it should be fine. So I'm gonna just leave them and I'm gonna try burying them. Down here, this one's a little bit weird, a little, little patchy. But I have Sapornia, Pink Beauty, and Clark Clarklia, Clarkia Giant Salmon. And I'm getting pretty good rates on this one, except for this area. I don't know what's going on there, but I just re-sewed these. And then also in here, I re-sewed all of the Sapornia because uh, I think I have like 10 of them and that's not that many. And the very last tray is my Amaranth. And this one I'm really excited for. I have Coral Fountain, Burgundy, Red Spike, Hot Biscuits, and Emerald. And they're all doing really good. I just need to come out, thin them, and divide them. So like this has five, so I just need to go in and put them in their own individual cell. So they're all coming along pretty well. Um, some spots are hit and miss, and some of them are just dying. I'm not too worried about it. So I need to just go in and direct seed Cosmos, and I also need to start my Sunflowers, which I'm just gonna direct seed and i have a few other things zinnias i need to start my zinnias today that is what all of those trays on that bed are going to be used for so i'm gonna have to find a different way to keep the dog off the bed but i fully plan to use all of those and that'll be nothing but zinnias i want a ton of zinnias this year the few that i had last year did really well um yeah so seedling update everything's doing really well and I cannot wait for this year to see like what they do. And I wanna show you guys also this area. So this this is when I have everything going. Um, we are in March and this is our last frost. So we're just past that. And I need to do a lot of these. I was gonna do more sweet peas, but I'm out of seeds. And then I have in here throughout the rest of the growing season when I need to, um, succession plant certain things that way i continue to have a harvest all the way up to our last frost november 23rd so that way i'll have plenty enough stuff to harvest all the way up until till october i'll be harvesting stuff really um and then things will start to fizzle out in november 
And then I have to start some more seeds in December. I haven't put that on there, but that'll be like things like Lysianthus and a few other things that take a really long time. I have to put poppy seeds in the fridge or in the freezer. So December is also another busy month. And then January, we start back on seeds, everything. Five weeks, six weeks, seven, eight weeks to last frost. And these are what I started um, in December, the very end. So this is how I try to stay organized is by putting a wall calendar up and labeling everything that needs to be done. And then this is my rack where I keep everything. This is Hortonova netting, which is what I'm going to be using to use as a trellis on the ground, uh, staked up a little high. And that way flowers can grow through it and they don't flop everywhere in my rows. This is my paper cutting machine, which is how I'll wrap all of my flowers. And then here's rubber bands to tie those together, which I can put down there. These are more of these sticky traps that I seriously love these, you guys. And then I have my labels. And then these are seeds. These are the only seeds that have been pretty good from Eden Brothers. And it is the Sensation Mix. This I liked. We bought a pound, one pound of these. Um, so that was good. But I don't know. They got wet somehow. I don't really know how they got wet. So I'm going to need to go through and clean these guys out. But then these are all of my, this is everything I have left to sow. And it's sorted, so these are sunflowers. And then I have some snapdragons. These are all zinnias, some more zinnias. What is that? And then that's all cosmos back here. And then these are all sunflowers. So I still have a ton of stuff that I need to sow. Oh, and I also want to do this this year. Look, how cool is that? So it is wheat and it's blue. I thought that that would be really pretty in some arrangements. So I also have to sew this, but I'm going to wait till next week because our 10 day forecast is nothing but rain. This is kind of where I process everything. These are all of the seeds that have been done. These are all of my vegetables in here. These are all of the beautiful seed catalogs from Johnny's, Baker Creek. This is a Swan Island Dahlia one. And then these are seed packet envelopes. These are the rest of my house plants I have. This is how I water everything as I fill up this jug um, that I got from the Goodwill. And I just go in and pour it into each container. And then let me show you guys this. So this, these are sponges. And I got them from Home Goods for $3. And I'm gonna use them around my dahlias this year as a form of pest control for slugs and snails. So I'll do a whole video on that as the, as, my dahlias grow up and when I get them planted then I will um, show you guys how I'm going to be doing this and then lots of cinnamon this is supposed to take care of the gnats but it didn't and twine because that's how I will be tying um, after I use the rubber bands tying the bouquets together if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments below let me know what you're growing I would love to know what you have going on that I don't have going on um yeah so thanks for visiting our garden guys I'll see you in the next one bye